Now, let me introduce Dano. Dano is, I hope I'm not wrong to say you're the founder and leader of the Ukulele Union of Boston. And the story was that uh, he taught the very first ukulele class. And this was in Cambridge, Massachusetts at the Adult Center. At the end of that, I don't know how many weeks that was, it's like goodbye, and the students say, wait, 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 you can't leave us. You know, we got to do something. So they got together and they've been meeting every other week or once a month, every other week for about 10 years until the pandemic shut everybody down. And it was just coincident because we were losing our space. Am I right? Dana was looking That's for space. Right, yeah. And then, and Dana was the first to go into Zoom and say, we're gonna go into Zoom. Like, absolutely first. People didn't even know what Zoom was. And he was there every Saturday with a talent show. So Dano, could I spotlight you and you tell us about how that's going? Hi everybody, and thank you so much for inviting me to your event. Um, yeah, so that's exactly how I know Anne, is through the Ukulele Union of Boston. And um, it's just, it's a delight to me that the tentacles of ukulele love spread out so deeply and thoroughly throughout the world. And as you were just going through the geography here to see folks from all around, uh, uh, well, I was going to say around the world. It sounds like North America, right? Um, it, it, it warms the cockles of my heart. So yeah, we're still doing our Saturday night online ukulele talent show, uh, which, you know, we started it at the very first of the pandemic saying as a little joke, well, as soon as this thing is over in a week or two, we'll get back to our regular schedule. And uh, it just kept going and kept going. I know you guys know how that feels. Um, folks are starting to get back together in real life, which is great. So we're still doing, I think we'll just keep doing it. I'm sure like you're doing here, Anne, there's a certain advantage to doing things online that it's different than real life, but there are advantages to it. Let me just say to all folks here, anybody who's interested in coming along on a Saturday night, we actually changed the name from the ukulele talent show to ukulele show and tell, because it occurred to a few of us that talent show sort of was implying that there was a level of talent expected. And uh, we have very many very talented people, but there is no expectation. So we would love to have anybody come by for show and tell. One of my favorite nights was the night we said, it is show and tell to the point that you're not allowed to do anything that involves a ukulele. And so all of our regular people had to come and do something. It was a great way to get to know people differently. And it was really fun. And that list you went through, you went through so quickly, but that's like a million dollar ukulele lesson. Uh, there's so much valuable information on that list. I teach a blues class and Let's see. So you were saying how you could jazz up a two chord song or a three chord song. This is a blues song called Baby Please Don't Go. Anybody know that one? So I've seen it. Uh, yes. Uh, Johnny Lee Hooker did it. Uh, Muddy Waters did it. Uh, the Rolling Stones did it. Um, and it's a one chord song. Now that should be the epitome of a song that is boring because that's the way most of us are taught to think about playing the ukulele is that the excitement comes from the chords and the chord variations and the number of chords that you can throw in. And then maybe secondarily, the strumming. My opinion is that the opposite, it, it, the strumming is by far more important than the chords. But here's, here's how the song goes if you just strum the one chord. I'll do it in the key of A, which means the chord is A. Let's see, I always I feel a little, um, silly doing blue songs on the ukulele but sometimes they sound great oh baby please don't go baby please don't go oh baby please don't go down to new orleans you know i love you so one chord da -da 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 -da. now i'm already doing some of the tricks that ann was talking about i can't stop myself because really if i just strum it then it sounds like a folk song let's see if i can do it that way there, that would be the basic strum, is just a down, up, down, up. Oh, baby, please don't go. And it sounds okay. Oh, baby, please don't go. Oh, baby, please don't go down to New Orleans. You know I love you so. But you don't need a second verse, because now we've heard absolutely everything that the song has to offer. But 
Now, this is what I've practiced. It's going to sound like there's more to it than there is. But just by throwing in some of the tricks Anne was talking about, let's see. You probably can't quite hear what I'm doing. My house is freezing cold right now. My fingers are a little numb, but I'm trying to get in this kind of Jimi Hendrix, just to bounce up and down on one note. So that's all around an A chord, and it's just thrown in about seven of those things from the, the list that Anne was sharing with us. The players often shy away from, they feel like they need either a chord to play or they need to be doing a chord melody, you know, where you've got the chord up the neck with the melody note in it. And a real nice thing is just to stop and pick out those single notes. That's the melody of the song. And, um, for those of you who don't know me, I, I teach a ton of classes online and offline all over the place. So I'm, I'm very experienced with the questions that people bring to, and the stereotypes of that people bring to the ukulele. And what I love is being able to bring up something that kind of catches your ear by surprise and make, makes you draw up a little bit, say, oh, I didn't think you could do that on a ukulele. And you don't have to be good. That's, you just have to, uh, be open to experimentation. If you're willing to take a real simple song like that one, Baby Please Don't Go, a one chord song, and then fool around with it and figure out how many of those little tricks can I throw in to one chord, all of a sudden it starts to sound like real music and less like just a, you know, a, a children's melody or something. All the notes, this is a, this is a blue strategy called the BB box from BB King. Then these notes always go together. So first two strings closest to the floor, these notes are all either going to be open, those two strings, or fretted at the third fret, those two strings. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah. So I'm holding an A chord. When I strum it, I get that. I play O, and there I am just walking up those two strings on fret zero, fret three. Oh baby, please. And then it goes back down. Don't go. It doesn't go back down, it's just the open string. Oh baby, please don't go. The seventh matches the A7. So if you put it together, and I'm making this more into a lesson than I said I would, I hold the A chord, I pluck those notes, strum. I pick the single notes again. Strum. And I love that. If you actually hold it the way I am, it's an A plus those two. It's All it is is an A7 with some extra notes in there, but it gives you that discordant sound of the blues that I just love. It sounds wrong and right at the same time. So that's it in essence. And, and the other thing that I was throwing in there that you maybe heard and don't have on your list is a little bit of a string bend, which is great for the blues. And if you've never tried bending a string, uh, it depends on what strings you have. <laughs> if you've got cheap department store strings, you probably aren't going to be able to bend them because they're too thick and meaty like a fishing line. But um, one of the best upgrades you can do on your ukulele is to get good quality strings. And good quality strings have a little different flexibility to them. Uh, cheaper strings doesn't mean that they're bad, it just means you can't do some things, and bending is one of them. 
So, um, so some extra tips on some simple one chord things because it puts the melody on those top strings. Um, that's a great little practice tip too, is uh, pick a song that you know. I happen to know that one in my head very well, but you could do, you know, Three Blind Mice and practice finding the notes of the melody um, and then start to work out that kind of an arrangement. If you know the song in your head, it's much easier to create it because you can hear when it when you're doing it wrong. So this is an old time song, My Grandfather's Clock from, anybody know? What is it, like 18? So I'll be honest, folks, I, I despise this song. <laughs> um, oh, there it is, 1876, it's right in the title. Um, I don't despise it. It's a long, long song that's not very interesting. And that's exactly what we're talking about today, is what can we do to make a not very interesting song interesting. And it does tell a cute story, but you sort of figure it out in the, in the first verse. And I think maybe for Victorian audiences sitting around the fireplace in the parlor. It was thrilling to get going on the story. But it is a three, it's a four chord song, I believe. There's a surprise chord that comes up halfway through the chorus. But basically it's a three chord song. And as I'm sure you know, um, chords travel in families, right? So if we're playing in the key of C, the nice friendly chords in that family are C and G or G and, and F. And that's mostly what this song is. So I think the reason Anne asked me to do this particular song with you today is that a couple years ago, we were performing together in a, a real human place where folks could attend, not online. And I had a, a good little visual that went with it. So I'll, I'll walk you through the first part of the song, give you the little visual, and then we don't need to go through the whole song together, I think, Anne. If, one of my pet theories about uh, people performing music is that it is the great equalizer. Watching somebody play music, everyone, every person becomes beautiful when they sing and play. And you can take the dumbest little song, and as long as you're having enjoyment while you're creating the performance, it becomes wonderful. And I love it, keeping it as simple as that. It, uh, one of my favorite ways to play, let's, I'll go right back to the song is just to hit the downs on the, my grandfather's clock was too large for the shelf da, 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 da. and that's right back to what Anne was saying in the intro why stick with a single strum if you can get two different strums and two lines and maybe four different strums and four lines right um, so what I meant by that just to clarify that I'm just hitting the one beat on that first line Oh, my one, two, I guess it's every other beat. One, two, three, four. My one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, it gives a different feeling and a different cadence. And a song like this where so much of it is about telling the story, that really puts the emphasis on the lyrics, which is great from a storytelling perspective, right? What will make it interesting to me the player and what will make it interesting to somebody who's listening in that's that's always my analysis um coming in on it was taller by half it was i might let me just start at the beginning my grandfather's my grandfather's clock was too large for the shelf stood 90 years on the floor now i wanted to fill in the space there if i had just stopped on floor floor would have been left hanging too long. So I just filled in the space. How did I know to do that? I sensed it. I just detected it with my spider music senses. So it stood 90 years on the floor. Dum, dum. It was taller by half. Now I'm doubling up the strum. Though it weighed not a penny weight. More and double up. It was bought, it was bought on the morn of the day that he was born. That's something I love to do. Christmas songs do this all the time, where the meter of the lyric suddenly speeds up. And I can't think of an example now, um, but it does it here. It was bought on the morn of the day that he was born. You see what I mean? How the cadence of the lyrics actually increases. And so it's fun sometimes 
to emphasize that. You heard me do it. It was bought on the morn of the day that he was born. I'm trying to match the lyrics with the strumming. Day that he was born. And he always was his pleasure. It was always his treasure and pride. But it stopped short, never to go again. Now, you heard me say I do this by feel, but I feel like at this point it stopped short. Almost any time a song has the word stop in it, you got to stop playing. <laughs> and it works here because it as it's literally signifying the point of the song. The clock is stopping. So you emphasize that by stopping playing. I'm not telling you you must. I'm telling you it makes a lot of sense to do it. But it stopped short, never to go again. And I'm muting the strings there. But it stopped short, never to go again. When the old man died. Back to a regular steady down. Now, if you're following along with this, don't bother taking notes. Get the get the sense of what I'm trying to accomplish, not exactly what I'm doing with my hands. Okay, now when we get to the bridge, 90 years without slumbering. I can't see myself on screen, but this is where the the bit comes in. 90 years without slumbering. Tick tock, tick tock. So those are the lyrics, and I think if you're a audience you know, in the parlor in Victorian times, all the little kids would be going tick tock, tick tock with great excitement. But when I learned this song, I learned it from a great guy called Little Rev who travels around doing ukulele shows. And he went, 90 years without slumbering. Tick tock. I did it wrong. Tick tock, tick tock. And the ukulele itself becomes the pendulum of the clock. The trick is, you got to work out the timing to get from the strumming to the tick tock, tick tock. So if you want to do the tick tock, um, you want to mute the strings by holding the ukulele with your fingers over the strings. Otherwise, when you do your pendulum movement, obviously you don't want the music ringing out. So just cover the strings. And um, <laughs> it's so funny to see people doing it. <laughs> so your strumming hand needs to be nails towards the string so you can get that click clack click clack get it closer to the microphone click clack click clack tick tock tick tock and i'm just making a little claw with my fingertips so i can get a swing swing and it hits the nails in both directions isn't that the silliest thing you ever saw so let's see if we can do it in real time Here's what I would do. I would get the C chord at the beginning of the bridge. 90 years without slumbering. Tick, tock, tick, tock. And just hit that C chord. That gives me enough time to physically move my entire body around to get into position for the swing. And then, and you ruined my whole morning for me today because I had to sit and practice this. How, how am I going to teach a swing in the ukulele like a pendulum? My suggestion for getting into that movement is hit the C chord, the first chord of the bridge, 90 years. That gives you your singing note. 90 years without slumbering. Tick tock. And then just keep going. His life seconds numbering. Tick tock. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old man. See how you can get both in there? But it does, you do have to account for the time as you shift back and forth from strumming to ticking. It's like learning a new chord or a new strum. You know, it takes a little bit of doing. Um, but once you've got it, you've got it in your bag of tricks. So let me tell you what happens in, this, in the song. Um, so grandfather had his clock I don't want to spoil the story for you, but if you scroll all the way down, you'll see that everything was going fine, going fine. The clock was the best friend throughout his whole life. I think that's why I dislike the song so much, because I like the beginning. He's got this magical totem of a clock. And at the end, there's kind of this spooky final chapter. But in between, he's going through his whole life and he loves nothing more than a clock. Really? No servant so faithful he'd found, for it wasted no time and had but one desire, 
at the close of each week to be wound. Yes, it kept in its place, not a frown upon its face, and its hands never hung by its side, but it stopped short, never to go again, when the old man died. And that's kind of the story of the song. <laughs> the only thing that leaps right to mind is... Uh, it is our departure to come. Still the clock kept time with a soft and muffled chime. You know, maybe stop and pick out the single notes to sort of mimic a chime sound. Still the clock tap time with a soft and muffled chime. And we stood da 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 da. So there's a what a what I do love about a song like this is that it's storytelling as much as it is music. And so there are so many little things like that that just add to the drama of the story. So I'm happy to take questions about that in particular, but I do have a, a, another version to share, if I may, Anne. I learned the parody version before I ever learned the real version. And this is a parody version of my grandfather's clock called Granddad's Cuspidor. And somewhere along in my early life, I came across a, um, a recording of this. And the only place that I know that it exists is on my computer. And so there's a link at the top here. It says audio recording. Um, but it's the same melody. Oh, my granddad's nose was as red as a rose caused by drinking new Redfield beer. And the flies follow him around wherever he goes and they play in the whiskers of his ear. So, and you're asking about sound effects and on the recording, let's see. There's a brass cuspy door, always sits by the door. Granddad chaws like a horse eating hay. He bites off a chew, chompity chomp, pitchew. And when, when he does the spit, there's a violin on the recording that goes like a, you can tell he's made a ringer right away. Oh, he spits tobacco juice, honkity honk, honkity honk, and he stands 20 feet away or more. Oh, he'll take another chew, chompity chomps, and he's never missed that old cuspy door. <laughs> and it goes on just like the real song. It goes on forever. But there's oh. another version of you. That, that's a, a great way to add excitement to a song is just to change the song completely. It, it hasn't got the, um, the plot of my grandfather's clock, but it's definitely got the tune and kind of the, the reference point as a jumping off point, you know. Let's give a big hand to Dano. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you so everybody. much for uh, giving us this wonderful lesson and demonstration of what you could do with the ukulele. Thank you. And I would just comment that if you have a child that you sing to or play to, my grandmother taught me this when I was little and she and I sang it together a lot, but it was only up to the verse that was tick tock, tick tock, da. Da, 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 da. So none of that biographical stuff came in. I was so fascinated by that song as a child, and maybe yours would be too.